I know what I want to be when I grow up. It's to be a doctor because a doctor makes a lot of money. That's what I thought. And you know how I knew that? From the game of life. But also, you could end up in a poorhouse, but you could also end up with tons of money and have a wife and tons of kids along the way in your little car that you drive around the board. Ah, hey, it worked out, but my car, wow. I got the pink peg. I got all those other pink pegs. I got a blue peg. Man, I need an extra. Oh, can I afford all that? Life. The game of life brings back a lot of pleasant memories for me. Hi, I'm Tom Vassell, and while I like life, especially the old game with that spinner that you spun, that amazing spinner, and you went up over plastic mountains, and you became a doctor or a lawyer or whatever, and you bought insurance and had great things happen to you, bad things, maybe got married, maybe didn't get married, had kids, did different things, and eventually got to the end, and whoever had the most money was the winner of the game. The game of life is very fond memory for me, but it's really not that great of a game for me because you just spin the spinner and kind of see what happens with a few choices. I'm here to offer you 10 replacement games for life. I'm not saying that life is an awful game. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not saying, so whether you like life or whether you don't like life, I think these are great games that you should check out regardless. So what are things that you might like about the game of life? Maybe you like that device, that spinner, right? I, I can't deny that. That spinner's fun, right? I, I want to figure out a way to use that spin in other games. Well, there's a game called Camel Up. It's a racing camel game in which you bet on camels, which camels are going to win, and the camels are slowly running around the board. How do they run? Well, there's this pyramid that you put dice into, and then you press kind of a button, and the dice pop out the bottom. Uh, it's, it's a really fun way to roll dice. It's kind of a silly device. You don't need it. You could just do different things to get these dice to come out. But this neat device, plus the fact that it's a really fun betting racing game, I'd recommend checking out Camel Up. Maybe you like the sense of accomplishment. You get to the end of life and you're like, Liss, I have a car full of children. And it's like, well, I don't, but I got a ton of money. Maybe you like that idea of, I now have this. I just bought a mansion. Well, there are games that do that. Roll Through the Ages is a game that actually puts you into a kind of a feeling of running a whole civilization. There's a bit of a Yahtzee feel to it. As you roll dice, use the symbols on those dice and build up your civilization. Very simple, very easy game, but when you're done, you're like, yeah, I built that statue and got a lot of points for it. Or maybe you want the idea of building your own house. Dream Home is a game in which you have a house and you're putting rooms into that house. And so you're getting different cards and placing them there and different cards are going to give you points. And when you're done, you can look at your house and say, look at this house that I have built. Also, maybe you just like the luck in life. There's a lot of luck, right? When you spin it in the original versions of life, there was ways to bet. You could put money on two different numbers and then spin the thing and hope that one of those came up. If you like that, there's games that give you that kind of feeling. Can't Stop is a game of luck in which you are rolling four dice, matching those dice up into two numbers, moving pieces up on columns, and you can keep going. But if you ever roll, if you roll the dice and you don't get any numbers, you've already rolled that turn, then you get nothing. But you can stop anytime you want. But of course, the game is called Can't Stop. There's also Ink and Gold, another game about pushing your luck. Ink and Gold, you're, there's a bunch of people and you are all walking down into this temple looking for treasure. You find treasure. You split it between everybody else. And at any point, you can leave. But you might want to go in farther to find more treasure. But you might find traps and eventually you, the, the tunnel might collapse or something. And then you get nothing for that round of the game. So you want to see how far am I willing to go into this tunnel. Maybe you like the idea of just moving through the path, moving through life as you go along to different spots and land on things. What is a game that does that too called Tokaido? Now, Tokaido has almost zen-like qualities. On, in this game, you are traveling along a path, and you can go as far along this path as you want, but you can never go back. And as you go in the path, you're getting different cards, and these cards will give you points. Some of them are going to build beautiful paintings in front of you that will give you points. Some of them are cards you're collecting different sets of. It's a very nice, easygoing game, but also offers you decisions because you don't roll a die to see how far you move. You can move any distance you want. Don't go too far because you can never go back. That's Tokaido. But there's a lot of games just about living life. That's the whole point of the game of life, right? Is this was your life. Well, there's one game I'd recommend in this regard, and that's CV. Now, CV has almost a Mad, 
magazine style artwork and theming to it. And in this game, you're rolling dice and getting different cards that will give you more dice or ways to manipulate your dice to get more points as time goes by and all kinds of crazy things. You get married, you become a bicycle champion or what have you, all kinds of crazy things in CV. Or a more serious look at the subject is the legacy of Duke de la Creche. This is a game in which you are trying to build families and you are trying to take your children and marry them off. This is back in the 17th and 18th century. Um, and get them married and have kids and trying to build like a legacy of, of a family behind you. But it's a very good game too. Or Last Will. Last Will is a silly game in which it's basically Brewster's Millions as a game. In this game, you are trying to lose all your money. And so you start with a lot of money and you are auctioning and doing different things and taking your horse out for dinner and doing all kinds of crazy things, trying to spend money faster than everybody else. Because if you get rid of the most money at the end of the game, get rid of all your money, you win. But that's the theming is fun, but the game is also really excellent. And then probably the best and most perfect game to replace the game of life would be the pursuit of happiness. In the pursuit of happiness, you are going to be making a lot of choices as the game goes by. You are eventually going to get old and die in this game. But as you get old and die, you're going to pick jobs. You're going to pick um, uh, spouses, maybe date someone and then marry them. You are going to pick different career paths. Maybe you're going to go for a, a really strange hobby. Or maybe you're going to try to get this accomplishment or get this possession. There are lots of different cards in this game, but there's some very strategic play as you're trying to outthink everybody else. It's really similar to the life, but the luck is essentially taken out. And instead, you are making meaningful decisions about how your life is going to end. It's a fantastic game, The Pursuit of Happiness. These are 10 games that I would recommend to replace life. And even if you don't like life at all, I certainly would consider trying them out because they're wonderful, terrific games. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.